Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for better weather next time you play. Maybe. Today we're tackling Aurora Monroe, otherwise known as Storm, also known as the most powerful X-Men to not lose her whole damn mind. Considering the awesome chaos caused by her powers, her self-control is obviously the reason she's one of the leaders on the team. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, Storm's the name, Storm's the game. We need to make weather happen. Flying would also be nice. There are guys with knife hands fighting on the ground. Let's just avoid that. Finally, we'll make sure that we can unleash nature's wrath on anyone who attacks us. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want. Just make sure wisdom and charisma are above 13. Charisma will be on top. Your mutant power comes from within, and you're an excellent leader. Wisdom will follow. Communing with nature requires high nature. Wait, nature is intelligence? Why? Constitution after that, a blizzard makes things cold and you shouldn't stop because you need a blanket. Dexterity after that, despite all of her fantastic power, she can still fight with swift strikes. Intelligence is lower than I'd like, it's just not super conducive to the build and will drop strength. Storm lifts with tornadoes, not biceps. As per usual with mutants, we're steering away from the variant human tradition we have going here. We'll go for a half elf for Storm. This gives you plus two charisma and plus one for two more skills, I'd go for wisdom and constitution. You get 60 feet of dark vision, useful when you blacken the skies. Fey and Ancestry for advantage on saves against being charmed, and half elves get two skills of their choice, go for acrobatics and nature. Additionally, you get two skills from your background. Pick Sage for Arcana and History, she's a teacher when she's not throwing lightning bolts. We'll kick things off as a sorcerer, letting you take two skills from their list, go for persuasion and intimidation. For your subclass, Storm Sorcerer obviously is the pick here, it's literally in your name. You get Tempestuous Magic, letting you fly 10 feet without provoking opportunity attacks when you cast a spell of first level or higher. For your cantrips, Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack attack dealing 1d8 that prevents the target from taking reactions. Thunderclap deals 1d6 thunder damage to every creature within 5 feet of you that fails a constitution save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and your charisma modifier, so if you're surrounded you can get some great damage out of this. Ray of Frost is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 cold damage and reduces the target's movement speed by 10 feet. You got 3 different damage types just from cantrips. Weather is a complicated power set, but it's very good. For your first level spells, Witch Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d12 lightning damage per round and can last up to a minute depending on your concentration, meaning that if you land it once, you don't have to re-roll until something breaks the bolt. Thunder Wave forces a constitution save on creatures in a 15-foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet. Half if they succeed and no pushing. This is great for pushing people off of high places. Thunder works well in the sky, who would have guessed? Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with some sorcery points, which you can use to recover spell slots. For this level's spell, Featherfall lets you reduce fall damage for up to 5 falling creatures as a reaction. You can fly, but the rest of the party can't. Also, you can't. Yeah, third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you augment your spells by spending sorcery points. Careful spell lets you protect the teammates that end up in your line of fire, automatically letting them pass a saving throw. You can pick an amount of creatures equal to your charisma modifier. Empowered spell lets you reroll an amount of damage die equal to your charisma modifier. Currently, you're not rolling a ton of dice, but eventually you will be. For this level spell, Gust of Wind creates a line of wind 60 feet long and 10 feet wide, forcing strength saves or pushing the creature 15 feet along the line. Creatures moving through the area move half as quickly, and you can change the direction of the wind with a bonus action, this lasts up to a minute depending on your concentration. Now this doesn't technically deal any damage, but it's a utility spell that can really mess up an enemy's position, and it can be very fun if you get creative. Now at 4th level, sorcerers get an ability score improvement or a feat. Elemental Adept is something I gave to Thor, but for Storm we need it on lightning, thunder, and cold damage. Instead, I'm just going to recommend bumping your charisma to make these spells more accurate. For your spells, let's get some more cold damage with Snillox Snowball Swarm, creating a 5 foot radius sphere that forces dexterity save on creatures inside, dealing 3d8 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. We now have as much variety from spell spells as we do from cantrips, so you can deal great damage without stressing about resistances. We'll bounce over to Cleric now, specifically a Tempest Cleric for a couple of levels. As a Tempest Cleric, you have Wrath of the Storm, letting you force a dexterity save equal to 8 plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier, dealing 2d8 lightning or thunder damage on a failure and half as much on a success when somebody hits you with an attack. You can do this an amount of times equal to your wisdom modifier 
modifier per long rest. For cantrips, guidance gives a creature you touch 1d4 to add to ability checks. Resistance does the same thing for saves. Chalk it up to some good leadership. As for your spells, you can learn Fog Cloud, which creates a 20-foot radius cloud of fog that heavily obscures the area inside for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Since we're multi-classing spellcasters, remember to check out page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many slots you have at any given level. Second level clerics get Channel Divinity. Yours is called Destructive Wrath, and it lets you forget about rolling once per day and just roll maximum damage on a spell dealing lightning or thunder damage. So whether it's a toad or anything else, they're gonna feel it when you strike them with lightning. Back over to Sorcerer, fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells. Lightning Bolt pairs very well with Destructive Wrath, dealing 8d6 lightning damage to creatures in a 100 foot line that fail a dexterity save half as much on a success. I don't really have a clever comment for this, Lightning Bolt's hurt. Sixth level storm sorcerers get Heart of the Storm, giving you resistance to thunder and lightning damage and letting you deal lightning or thunder damage equal to half your sorcerer level to creatures within 10 feet of you of your choice when you cast a spell of first level or higher that deals lightning or thunder damage. You also get the storm's guide, letting you stop rain within a 20 foot radius sphere from your person or change the direction of the wind. Now you can't speed the wind up, that's what gust of wind is for. For this level spell, fly gives you a flying speed of 60 feet per round for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Technically, you can explain that you're changing barometric pressures or whatever, or you can just say that you're flying. Flying is cool. Seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells. Ice storm creates a 20 foot radius sphere that forces a dexterity save on creatures inside. They take 2d8 bludgeoning damage and 4d6 cold damage if they fail to save, half as much if they succeed, and the area turns into difficult terrain next turn. Ice is nice, and this has a really nice area to take down a bunch of brotherhood in one round. 8th level sorcerers get an ability score improvement. Cap your charisma, then round up your wisdom for more don't hit me or I'll lightning you juice. For this level spell, dip back into the 3rd level for Sleet Storm, creating a cylinder similar to Ice Storm, but this one just heavily obscures the area, forcing concentrating casters to roll concentration saves and makes the area difficult to rain, tripping creatures that fail a dexterity save. This also lasts for a full minute, so if your team wants to keep their distance, you can use this to make the other team very clumsy. Ninth level sorcerers can learn 5th level spells. Cone of Cold for the constitution save on creatures in a 60 foot cone, dealing 8d8 cold damage to those that fail, half to those that succeed. Lightning is great, but don't rule out a blizzard every now and then. 10th level sorcerers can pick another meta magic option. Heightened spell costs 3 sorcery points, but it forces disadvantage on a creature to save against your spells. Considering how high your save is, disadvantage could pretty much guarantee max damage. For your spell, take a trip all the way back to the first level for Ice Knife. This shoots an icicle at someone as a ranged spell attack, dealing 1d10 piercing damage on a hit. Whether it hits or not, creatures within a 5 foot radius of the impact make a dexterity save or take 2d6 cold damage. Obviously, this isn't comparable to some of your higher level slots, but it's nice to have options as you obviously have more lower level slots. 11th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells. Chain Lightning forces a dexterity save on a creature within 150 feet of you, dealing 10d8 lightning damage on a failure, half as much on a success. Now, that's pretty good, but then it arcs off of them and forces the same save on up to three other creatures within 30 feet of them. Now, remember that channel divinity where you can just give up on rolling and do max lightning damage? That means that this spell can deal a total of 320 damage when split across four enemies. Fun fact, while growing up, some people thought Storm was a literal god. This is why. 12th level sorcerers get an ability score improvement. I'd bump up your constitution because sorcerer hit die are d6s and that's sad. All right, folks, confession time. While writing this build, I was 100% confident sorcerers could learn the spell control weather. Turns out they can't. It's only for clerics, druids, and wizards. Honestly, it seems like it's deliberately avoiding sorcerer. So I had the option of rewriting this entire build to invest 15 levels for one spell, and really, it's not worth it. Sorcerer's spell list gives you so many more options than Tempest Cleric. Spells like Lightning Bolt, Cone of Cold, and Chain Lightning never make an appearance on the Tempest list. Additionally, Control Weather as a spell takes a ton of time to use. It's situationally useful as opposed to something like Fly, which is useful pretty much daily. So if you're mad at me, be mad at me, but I truly believe this is the stormier build. All right, now back to Tempest Cleric. Third level clerics get Shatter from their domain. This forces a constitution save on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, half to those that succeed. If there are some sort of inorganic constructs, they'll have disadvantage on the save, so Sentinels beware. Fourth level clerics get another ability score improvement 
Ferryman, I'd bump up your constitution for even more help and better concentration. Fifth level clerics can learn third level spells. Tempest clerics get Call Lightning, creating a cylinder with a 10 foot height and a 60 foot radius. You need to have open ceilings up to 100 feet above you, but as long as you do, you can call down a bolt of lightning, forcing a dexterity save on creatures in a five foot radius somewhere in that cylinder as an action on your turn, dealing 3d10 lightning damage to those that fail. Keep in mind you can make this action every turn for the 10 minute duration of the spell as long as you keep your concentration up, so this can be very economical. Sixth level Tempest Clerics get Thunderbolt Strike, meaning that when you deal lightning damage to a creature, you can also push them 10 feet away, so Shocking Grasp now pushes people, so that's fun. You can also channel Divinity twice per day now, so that insane chain lightning damage trick, double that. Seventh level Clerics can learn fourth level spells. Tempest Clerics get Control Water. There's a lot of effects you can do with this water that fits into a hundred foot square. You can raise the water to capsize ships, part the water so your party can move through it, change its direction or flow, or my personal favorite, a whirlpool. This creates a cone that's 50 foot wide at the top, 5 feet wide at the base, and 25 feet tall. Creatures have to make an athletics check against your spell DC if they're stuck inside. If they fail, they take 2d8 bludgeoning damage on each turn they fail. This can last up to 10 minutes and they have disadvantage on the save subsequent turns, so drown them. It's scary. Our capstone will be 8th level of cleric with an ability score improvement. I'd bump up the wisdom score for better saves on your cleric spells. You also get divine strike, adding 1d8 thunder damage to your melee attacks. It's weird to talk about about what weapon to use at the 20th level, but your dex is better than your strength, so I don't know, how about a rapier? Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you can deal insane lightning damage twice per day, and very good lightning damage even more often. You've also got plenty of other damage variety to overcome resistances. Finally, flying is very good, and you can do that. For weaknesses, mixing casters means that you miss out on some higher level spells. Still, control weather excluded, I feel like this is the best mix of spells for a storm build. You're also lacking in strength, dexterity and intelligence basically missing out because you have to invest in two casting modifiers finally you have a plethora of area of effect spells which are great for enemies but even with careful spell could really mess up your teammates if they're fighting people close but wolverine won't care throw lightning cold and thunder just try and keep that friendly fire to a minimum if you can at least you took the brotherhood down surely one of the x-men has healing powers right they don't what Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. And come back next week for double the royal fun.